This is an exact quote from the memoirs of Ronald Reagan. He said one day in 1985, he was meeting with some of his top space people, and he was stunned to learn that our capacity was such that we could orbit 300 people at a time. Now, at the time, Atlantis, Challenger, Columbia, Discovery, there are only four space shuttles. The max capacity is eight persons per shuttle. That's only 32 people. Reagan said we had 300. The Space Force is already there and already real, but it's top secret. He cannot say it. So this is basically the back door to getting disclosure. And mark my words, someday when we have a Space Force, suddenly it's just going to be huge. We won't have one, and then suddenly it's going to be an enormous Space Force. Meanwhile, as much as I love NASA, things are incredibly frustrating. When you look at how much they got done in only nine years in the 60s, today is the absolute antithesis of that. Things continue to get pushed back. This article just came out a week ago. NASA is now saying they need an additional $1.2 billion to get the space launch system into outer space, and they now say it's not even likely to get it up by 2020. Originally, they wanted to have this thing up in the mid-2000s. So I have to ask at this point, I hate to ask, is this an intentional stall? Is NASA the public front? It's being stalled out on us while amazing things are happening behind the scenes. Here's that wonderful quote from Ben Rich. This came out way back in 1993. We also have, did you know this, there are actually confirmed secret astronauts. This is real. These guys were through the Air Force. These were what were called the Astro Spies. So while NASA was training the Gemini astronauts, the Air Force was training their own astronauts. And they were going to orbit in what was called the Gemini Manned Orbiting Laboratory. It was a Gemini capsule with a space station on the back. And it would have included the first ever African-American astronaut, Major Bob Lawrence, who sadly dies in a training accident a couple years later. A couple interesting things. Did you know, even to this day, the Air Force Space Command is better funded than NASA? We also have many astronauts trained that never officially fly. All of those secret astronauts, everybody, were rolled into the end of the Apollo program. And all of these surviving men, or actually about half of them, actually flew on the early space shuttle missions. But we have a lot of people that are trained as astronauts that officially never fly. Down here at the bottom, we have one of my favorite astronauts. This is Harrison Jack Schmidt. He was the first ever scientist astronaut. Now, normally, you only hear about Jack Schmidt. But recently, I was reading a book where they said they actually certified 50 different scientists to actually fly just like Schmidt did. So they flew one out of 50 of them. What happened to the other 49 guys? Were they just moved into administrative roles or did they secretly fly somewhere too? During the 50s, prior to NASA, we have very open communication with the government and scientists. We have the U.S. government buying out anti-gravity patents. We have very good quotes from people like Donald Kehoe who said there were at least 46 unclassified anti-gravity projects way back in the 1950s. So ask yourself, have we truly made zero progress in 70 years in anti-gravity, or have we made phenomenal progress and we just aren't knowing about it? So here's NASA's official timeline of manned space exploration. We have the one-man Mercury missions, two-man Gemini missions, we have the three-man Apollo program, we have the U.S.-Russian Apollo-Soyuz project, the shuttles start in 81, they're retired in 2011. Here is my alternative timeline. But the astronauts continue with the Air Force. 